Welcome back. Let's get back to that big announcement from Fiat Chrysler this week. Such welcome news for Metro Detroit. Let's talk about it with senior analyst from Auto Trader Michelle Krebs, and back with us again, the business columnist from the Detroit News, Daniel House. Um, Michelle, as I said off the very top of the program, this is the kind of news that a lot of Michiganders thought we don't, we don't get to hear that kind of stuff anymore. 6,500 jobs, 4.5 billion dollars in investment in this in the city of Detroit or thereabouts. Uh, that's amazing news. It was a big good week. What does it What does it mean beyond the, the basics? What does it tell us? Well, Fiat Chrysler laid out this plan some time ago, and now they're executing it. That they are going to focus on the Jeep and Ram brands, and so a lot of this investment is going to new Jeep products and. That those are global products, which yeah. is important too. Uh, Daniel, do, do as I asked the governor, do do we owe President Trump uh, a share of credit for this in bringing manufacturing back to the United States? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, this is, I think, a vindication and a validation of a bet that was made ten years ago by Sergio Marchionne. It took foreigners to see the great uh, value in what I think is probably the most valuable American automotive brand in the world, in Jeep. This is all about growth, and that's what people need to remember. What's been happening in this town for way too long uh, to these car companies is in greater and lesser ways they've been managing decline. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the, the arc of the, of, their, of the market share, it's continued to drift down in little bits and pieces and bump up a little bit and drift down. Ram and Jeep are exceptions to that, and I don't think there's any question that this is a play by the company to say, we are going to build these products in the industrial Midwest, and they're going to come from three places. They're going to come from Northwest Ohio, Southeast Michigan, and Illinois, mm -hmm. and that is what Jeep is all about. And remember, this is a brand that only goes back to World War II. Yeah, he said something stunning there, uh, maybe to a lot of people, but he just, Michelle, do you agree Jeep is maybe the most oh. profound brand oh. of American vehicles yeah. in the world? The, the word iconic is overused, but you know, absolutely, wow. it, it is. It is a brand that many people aspire to. It's recognized around the globe. Yeah. I think we ought to also take a moment when you think about here we are in 2019, what it was like to, in 2009. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, <laughs> what has happened? Uh, yes. We didn't think Fiat yes. Chrysler then would exist, and so I think this is pretty amazing. You know, the other thing that's interesting, and I wrote this in a column this week, is is that. In 2008 and 2009, Marchionne agreed to deliver the small cars that the Obama administration insisted that they had to have, that they were going to be part of the future. They nodded, said, we'll do it. They've now killed those products, and they're investing everything in trucks and SUVs, because yeah. that's the way the market, and electrification. Electrification. So you have, you have things going, it's still, you still have the dual track, and people shouldn't think that this is all about traditional trucks and SUVs, because they're going to electrify, I think, pretty much that everything. entire Jeep fleet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a terribly important part of right. it. We could do a whole, an entire program right. on just the, the race to electrify, which is being led right now by China, unfortunately. But uh, Michelle, I did find myself thinking this past week, it's too bad Sergio wasn't around. To uh, This was his his baby, his idea, and to uh, receive the, the grateful uh, right. reception from Detroiters was, was, it was too right. bad. Right. I was at the June 1st event where he mm. laid out the plan, and uh, that was the last time I saw that, him. That was it, yeah. yeah. Um, of course, we can't have a week where all of the only news out of the auto world is good. Right. We also were reminded again of this very uh, deep tension that has been bubbling between uh, the UAW and General Motors. Where are we headed with this? Well, I think that we're probably headed to a strike in the fall. Um, the contracts, national contracts with GM, Ford, and um, Fiat Chrysler are uh, up in uh, mid-September, and uh, the situation with GM in particular is uh, particularly contentious because they have too much plant capacity and they yeah, had to close that. That's right. They, these companies are all in different pieces, in different parts, in different phases of, re of uh, restructuring. FCA took care of this stuff three years ago when they started on this, this move that is now culminated with these investments in Detroit. Mm -hmm. I agree with Michelle. I think um, in the most likely place, I think it's Lordstown, Ohio, um, where uh, that plan is going down here next, next month. Week, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, right there. the other thing that's interesting is Detroit Hamtramck Assembly here in Detroit has been given a reprieve to January of 2020. It potentially could take that out of the, this round of negotiations in September and kick it to the next contract. That's, that's some people's observation. Whether that actually happens remains to be seen. No question that I think you're, they're headed for um, a, a confrontation. 
there is, uh, and I think that this company is very committed to this, yep. and they are going to yep. make it happen. But I think anybody who thinks the UAW is just going to roll over and salute and say, "Okay, thank you very much," is is mistaken. Nasty. And well, since we've, we've, we're on with two of the big three, let's quickly hit on Ford. Uh, watching what they're doing right now with this, um, uh, with their, their campus, basically that they're building in Corktown, has gotten all this attention. But what's going to be going on there is probably more important than the symbolism of mm -hmm. revitalizing uh, Corktown. Um, this is where they're trying to build the new Ford in the new auto world. Right. That's where they're going to focus electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles. There's more going on in Ford than is out in the public yet. Um, Do tell. Uh, <laughs> That's what this program's all about. Yeah, I Michelle. know. It's it's so I think there's a lot more going on there. They're you know overseas. They're dealing with. They are they're doing the work that GM did a few years ago mm -hmm. of rationalizing mm -hmm. international operations. They're in a different place in terms of plant capacity here in the U.S. They yeah. just they're putting a bunch of money into Chicago, for right. example. Yeah. So, very different circumstances. But I think the the appearance, at least among the investment community, is they're moving so slowly. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, they're just not doing things, particularly in the U.S., that people expect. Michelle's right. They are. They've. They've. They've uh, tackled Europe. They've tackled South America. Uh, they got some serious problems in China, as do uh, mm -hmm. a, a lot of people. Uh, but they're not moving with a lot of dispatch, and I think people are getting somewhat frustrated. Well, let's end it though, just uh, smiling about what happened for uh, east uh, east side of Detroit this That's past right. week with Fiat Chrysler. Fantastic stuff. Thank you both for being here. Yep. Thank you for being here as well. Meet the press coming up next. Have a great week. We'll see you next time right back here for Flashpoint.